process of this testing into three stages. Have you any idea what's the difference between these three stages? In the, in the two first chain, the moment is in the moment it is not in the chain. In the chain, we don't have the, the moment is zero. The moment is zero? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. The shelf is in the middle, is yeah. zero. The shelf is in the middle, zero. is zero. And the bending moment is, 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 is yeah. It, it's like constant. Yeah, it's constant. But in the, in the side, the shelf was is there, it's constant. Yeah. So for this test, the consensus is that we have divided into this three things. First one is uh, working without track, the second one working with track, the third one the failure phase. So when I am at the end, see this figure. At the first uh, stage, second stage, crack entry the PM. And then at the third stage, the speed will be destroyed. So for this, for this three stage, this figure describes the distribution of the Stress and the stress. stress or the compressed stress or tensor stress distribution on this section. So, can you describe, describe the whole process? How how the how the stress distribution changed with, with the with the test going on or with the load increase? How the stress is yeah, or see compared with the R A and the two, what's the difference from this to stage? Uh, the height the, in the height of the track is increasing. In the high in the in the and the shelf force the shelf force in that down step is going is this is this is not the shape force actually. Uh, the moon, the, moon, the, 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 the distance. The distance from the distance. Which distance? Uh, from the normal, is it a normal force? The middle one. It keeps increasing. If it keeps in increasing, meaning like the, uh, how do I say, the strength keeps also the crust, the crust increase. And meaning it's getting to the eight yielding point. So the stress at the top part is also increasing. So, compared with this two. Confirming here the cracks are at the bottom. So yeah. once the crack appear, what happened then? The, uh, oh, the, the strength of the, the steel for the uh, reach the uh, reach is fellow. Mm. Yeah, the point. Yeah, this one. You need the strength. Yeah, the strength. Yeah, at the beginning, the, the beginning with the crack appear. The steel have not reached have not reached his yield stress. Yeah. At, the, at the end of at the end of the second the second uh, phase, it's yield the it's reached the yield yeah. stress. But at the beginning here, when the crack does appear, you see at the end of the first phase. The upper part of the section is in comparison. Yeah. The lower part is in tension. So, not only the steel bar, but also the concrete bearing the tensile force. Once the crack appear, the the tensile force in, induced or the tensile force bearing by the concrete was transferred to the steel. Mm -hmm. So. The lower part of the section no longer bearing the tensile force of the concrete. All the tensile force was bearing by this steel or the reinforcement. That means the the stress of the reinforcement increased greatly. And also you should see 
the neutral x compared to this is going up a little bit. But at this stage, the biggest change is the stress of the reinforcement increased greatly. And with a little improve or going up of the neutral x. And then the second end of the second phase with the primary increase, correct? The width, the length increase, generally the reinforcement which which is the yield stress, yield stress. And uh, you see the distribution of the compression stress is no longer a straight line distribution. It's in a curve distribution. Yes. So at this at end of end of the phase two, the reinforcement is nearly is reaching the yield strength. And then with the load increase. So what's the difference in this? The phase, phase two, end of phase two, and the, the beginning of phase three. What's the difference with this? Yeah, the, the load has become more, so the, str the stress is also raising. So which stress? Tensile stress or yeah. compression stress? Yeah, what? tensile. Tensile stress. This is stress it is it? No, 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 no. compressive stress. Stress stress. Yeah, compressive stress. So at this stage, because the still or the reinforcement have reached the yield stress, the stress will not increase it. nearly keep unchanged, but the strain will increase greatly. That means we if you need to need we need to keep the this structure keep balance, but this force now it does the increase. We have to increase the arm, the arm of this force. Then the neutral x say compared with this, the neutral the neutral x keep on going up, keep on going up, and then the compressed stress increases greatly. This is the beginning of the phase three. At the end of the phase three, see what's the difference in this two stage? Yeah, it's a stretch. The compressive stretch, the stress that uh, has stretch, uh, like extended the curve. If you reach the third of this, the third of the stage. Yeah. Like is the point where the thing has collapsed, like destroyed. Yeah. At the end of this uh, phase three, because of the the reinforcement already reached the yield strength, the concrete at the end of phase three also reached the compression strength. That means the concrete was crashed. So com compared with these two figures, you see. At the beginning, still the upper, the out, the distance to the neutral, the longest one, the screen, the screen is larger. But at the end, actually the largest screen, largest stretch is not not at the top. It's a little bit going down. Yeah, that's why because the end, the top already crashed. So that's the total process of the, this test. Uh, this three phase is the from this three phase. Uh, I, I think we have we have finished the two P. Yeah. Uh, Fifty, fifty, seventy, seventy, seventy is here. Should be here. The film.
So this, this is the worker phase of the, of the section. The first point, RA point, can be used as a base for calculating credit capacity for the flux member. So what's the meaning of this, this thing is? Because at the end of the phase, phase one, the, the credit have, have not appeared. It's, it's, it's going to appear once the, the tensile force reach the tensile strength of the concrete, the concrete will crack. So, RA point, that means the, the end of the first stage, we can use this point as the base to calculate the crack capacity. So, that means when the crack is going to appear, if you want to this drive, if you want to this beam working with, with without the crack, then you can use this point to control it. So and uh, how much tensile force the, the the beam will not generate crack or working with no crack. So then you know from this point you know once the once the tensile force larger than this point. Computer will crack. So the phase phase two is used as base for deformation and crack propagation over surface time. So that means you need, you for this phase two you can check the crack or deformation if if the crack is too large or deformation is too large because for the surface surface time. We can allow the we allow the beam working with the crack and working with some deformation, but we cannot too large too large deformation or too large crack will influence the normal surface. You see, each, each one bridge got a very large deformation. Of course, you, it, no one can no one no one would drive across. It's, it's afraid, afraid to to drop down. So this the phase two is used as a base for deformation and crack propagation over the surface time, and in uh, the phase three can be used as the base for calculating the loading carrying capacity for the limited state. Because in the phase three, that means once the load is larger than this point, the beam will going to collapse. So that's the biggest capacity for bearing force, bearing load. So this part can be can use that as the base for calculating the loading current capacity. So that means this this beam, how how the, the maximum load, how much load this beam can resist. Once the load exceeds this load, the beam will destroy. So this is the report, what's, what's the meaning, what's the use of this report, this three phase. Phase one is can use to, uh, to check whether this beam will work with the crack or not. And phase two you can, you can check whether the crack or deformation is too large or not. And phase three you can use to determine the maximum load capacity, bearing capacity. So this is the three phase. Okay. So you, you haven't got this textbook. No. Maybe we finish the years. <laughs> You should also talk to the lab and don't face people. I'm always talking to her. She said, it's annoying, it's annoying. You should also try and remind them. Maybe if she says, she'll be, she'll hurry up with it. <laughs> Maybe one or two weeks later. Yeah, because now she has been talking to her every day that the books, we need it, we need it. And she said, like, it's nothing, it's nothing. I 
Okay. Yeah. So now we so all now we see is in the helium mode of the flex membrane. Actually, this reverse complex flex membrane of flex beam has two failure properties. One is the plastic failure or ductile failure. Refer to the structure or component have significant deformation or other sign for fail before failure. And another one is the brittle failure, which refers to the structure or component have no significant deformation or other sign before failure. So, what's the meaning of these things? Have, have any idea we no. told before? Yeah. Plastic. Once you once you put too much steel or or too less reinforcement in the beam, it's not good. So only you design the beam according to your calculation and then put uh what's a suitable reasonable reasonable reinforcement inside. Otherwise, the, the filial mood is totally different. So, the first plastic filial. So, which 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 mood do you think is more dangerous? Plastic filial or the brittle filial? Brittle. Brittle. Because if it's plastic, it can repair, but if it's brittle, it's suddenly. Yeah. So it's happening suddenly. You have no time to react. Okay. So for the plastic failure, maybe you can see oh the deformation is increased greatly, greatly. You can do something to strengthen or something to repair. But for this brittle failure, it just happens suddenly, no time to do something. So it's dangerous. No uh, shit. I see. I saw a road in Shanghai. Shanghai. It was really Shanghai in Shanghai. 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 Yeah, they were, they were building a water in the in the rock. Rock? Uh, yeah, inside the yeah, in the rock. Yeah. I I don't know actually in that what which which how how was they able to do it? Uh, according to the process. It's a hotel, but they build it in the in the in the camp. How can I call it? Downstairs. Let me say it to you. The first you made you the rock. The first you made you the rock. It's like this. It's like this. It's like this. So, what's your question? The question is, how is it? It's like this. Anchored inside the inside the, the, the mountain rocks. Something, something like this. Red, red figure. 
Okay, so there's two different types of film roots. And uh, for this beam with different uh, reinforcement ratio, too much or too, too less reinforcement will induce different film mood. You see? For this one, is the properly designed reinforced beam. That means the, the reinforcement in this beam is uh, calculated, not, not just uh, uh, put by experience or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's according to the calculation of the force. And then the filament is like this. The, the crack, meaning the, the vertical crack, and the, the steel reaches the yield strength. The concrete of the crack reaches the compression strength. This happens at the, the same time. But for this, for this second one, it's an over reinforcement beam. That means you put too much steel inside. So the, at this situation, the steel inside have not reached its yield strength. Okay. Have not yet reached its yield strength, say, only a very small crack generated. And the steel can still, the, the reinforcement can still bear a large load. You may, you may have a large load, but the upper part concrete have already been crashed. So that means the function of the steel reinforcement have not fully used. It, you, you just use a little part of the tensile force, tensile strength of the steel. So that means you put too much steel inside. So this 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 film actually is belong to the brittle film, the carbon suddenly. And the concrete was, was, was crashed suddenly. You have no time to reaction. And this one is it, and also even this one is more dangerous. In this case, that means that you will put too less, too less reinforcement inside, too small, or even no reinforcement inside. You see, in some cases, actually, in, in the early stage of China, some of the some of the worker if they want to steal money, save money. They so don't put steel reinforcement inside. They just put some bamboo inside. Oh, what? Bamboo. <laughs> bamboo. Oh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> so this is like this. What happened? Just the just suddenly break down. So this means the tensile force, the tensile the. The, the capacity to resist the tensor force is very low. So that means that inside it's because too less or too less reinforcement inside or even no reinforcement inside. So once once the tensor force larger than the tensor strength of the concrete, then this beam will break. Because we know because we know the tensile strength of the concrete is very low, the compression strength is very high. So once the tensile force larger than the tensile strength of the concrete, it breaks. So that means that this happens suddenly, even even, even bigger than this one, I think. Because see, this one is break, it's totally break. But this one may be at least the inside have much reinforcement inside. Yeah. This one will not break, just maybe the concrete crash and some large deformation. 
But this one will be just a fall down. So that's the three situation. And this one, over reinforcement and uh, under reinforcement, all belong to the brittle failure. And this one, uh, properly reinforcement, belong to the plastic. Plastic failure. So different reinforcement ratio led to different uh, failure moods. So based on the experimental testing, failure mode of the reinforcement concrete beam is dependent on the reinforcement, reinforcement ratio rule. Still, still strength grade and uh, concrete strength grade. For the commonly used hot, hot road steel and uh, ordinary concrete, the main failure mode is affected by the reinforcement ratio. Yeah, see here. They mentioned that not only the reinforcement ratio, but also the steel reinforcement or steel strength and the concrete strength. Yeah. If you use super strong concrete, maybe the situation is, is a little bit different. Because now some, some of the concrete strengths can reach maybe just like the steel, like some steel, very, very high grade. Normal, normal concrete was only C40, C50, and now maybe C120, something like this. The strength is very high. So, but for the normal situation, it's mainly affected by the reinforcement ratio. Therefore, in coding with the steel reinforcement in concrete beam and the corresponding failure characteristics, it is expected that the steel failure forms specifically. Just reduced, and this is the appropriate reinforcement we have reduced. And another one, uh, oh yes, here they introduced the one of the one of the uh, uh, coefficient. We just uh, see this, see this. Maybe the the the, the phenomenon you all know, but some of the. Uh, we see that we 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 better to see the tensile strength. Ten, this tensile steel reinforcement of beam firstly reach its yield strength, and the stress remains stable while the strain increases significantly until the compression strain of the compressor edge of the compression zone reaches the limit. So first, the, at the end of the second two phase, second phase. The steel reaches the yield strength, but the concrete have, the, in the compression zone have not reached its yeah. compression strength. So that means the steel reaches the yield strength first, and then the concrete, the stress of the concrete increase until the compression strength of the concrete at the edge reaches the limit. Reaches the limit, that means it reaches the compression strength. And the longitudinal and the horizontal spread in comparison to appear and then come to the crest. We have failure of the beam. Crack of, crack of the beam propagate rapidly with a large deformation and the cross section of the beam has a great plastic deformation. Then the beam has a obvious sign for damage and then the plastic failure. So here it induced one of the Factor or coefficient factor this fair. The section character fair. So you know the culture, the section culture. This this is section culture is an uh, indicator of the compression 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 strength, stiffness and the deformation capacity. It's uh, impressive is this fair equal to y c divided by uh, c i h zero. So this one I equal to this y c divided by uh, c i h zero. So what's the meaning of this symbol? Y c y c compressed is the strength of the concrete and uh, H0 is the effective height 
and the Kasi, what's, what's the main Kasi? Uh, compression height. Relatively compression height. Relatively com compression height. Mm. Height of height, height. But the, the deep the pressing zone is a uh, KC multiply H0. So that means they use this small, uh, if this network, this distance, they use KC B0. This distance. The compression height. And the third way is the section curvature when still yield. See, this use the symbol way, fair way, corresponding to the year when still yield. And the fair U is the ultimate culture. So that means the beam, the deformation of the beam is something like this. Or you may want deformation. So maybe at this state, this, this culture. <coughs> Okay. 
Greek? No, I said not. Yes, he, he is, uh, is, is, is correct. The, because this thing is not, is not talking about the all reinforcement. Actually, it's just the uh, introduction of the maximum reinforcement ratio. But this, this maximum reinforcement ratio is not, is not to say, uh, or say is the, the largest uh, Reinforcement ratio for the appropriate appropriately designed beam, or in other words, the reinforcement ratio cannot be larger than this value. Once, once larger than this value means is an over reinforcement beam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's the mean of this sentence. So when the actual reinforcement ratio is larger than root max, then the compressing concrete of the beam is crushed. While the tensor steel, tensor steel reinforcement have not yet reached the yield yeah. strength. Before failure, deflection and the section curvature uh, of the beam have no obvious turning point. The crack intensity is not wide and the extension is not high. There is no obvious warning sign of failure. Mm -hmm. So it's happening suddenly, and not a very obvious sign of failure. Damage happens suddenly, and it's a brittle failure. This failure is also called over reinforcement beam failure. So that's, it. that's this over reinforcement. So here, actually, room mass. Is a, the li limit boundary layer? Yeah. So you cannot larger than this way. So the failure, the failure of the over reinforcement beam is uh, to use up the concrete compression strength, and the tensor strength still have not yet been have not been fully used. Therefore, MU. U means ultimate before destroy the largest load, largest movement. MU corresponding to the failure of the over reinforcement beam is independent on steel reinforcement, but dependent on the concrete compression stress. So for this region, the the loading carrier capacity actually is dependent on the Concrete strength. No matter what what steel you use, because you put too much steel inside, and the the key point is the compression strength of concrete, not the tensile strength of steel. Because this failure is the, is the crash of the concrete, not the not the steel reaches the air. So that's the that's the the key point for this over reinforcement beam. It's depend on the concrete compression strength. Uh, and the reinforcement beam. The room is too small. It is also brittle failure. We said is is more dangerous. So when the reinforcement ratio of the beam is small. After beam tensile concrete crack, steel stress is close to its yield strength. So once the crack appears, then suddenly the steel reaches the yield. And the crack moment M crack is close to the moment M yield, corresponding to the tensile steel yielding. 
That means phase two is shorter. So phase two, phase two actually is the phase of the development of the crack. Crack become wider and longer. For this situation, this phase two is going very shorter. Once the crack appear, the steel just reach reaches the yield strength. So the the phase two is is a how say compressed to very shorter. So normally, once the crack appear and a long very long distance where this phase two, the the steel reaches the yield strength. They have a phase of relatively long. But now, once the crack appear, suddenly the steel reaches the yield strength. The phase two could become very very shorter. Short. Yes. So that's the difference with the, this over reinforcement beam. Or uh, over reinforcement beam is the third phase. Third phase just uh, uh, become shorter. Oh no 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 no. I play the two uh, over reinforcement I play is not the not the two I play. It's both of this. The still have not reached is the other strings, but the concrete crash. Um oh, it's not right. it's the that's it. It's still cracked. Yeah. It, it, it is phase two, it's phase two. Phase two become very shorter. Yeah. Yes. Phase, uh, phase three, phase three become very shorter. So for the, for this. Oh, last one. So the over and first beam is phase three. Yeah, you see, we, we, see, this, we, we see this figure. Uh, which one, which one, which one? Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. This one. So this this one, this is two, and this is three. For the over reinforcement beam, actually the steel having not reach is the yield strength. It will still go up. But when it's going up, the concrete already crashed. Mm -hmm. So actually, there's no, for the over reinforcement beam, actually there's no, there's no phase 3. Phase 3 means the reinforcement reaches the yield strength. The stress of the reinforcement no longer increase, but the, the strength of the reinforcement increases greatly. So for the over reinforcement beam, the curve is like this, going up, going up, going up. But maybe just go a little bit, just crash. There's no the increase of the strain or the steel bar. But for the and the reinforcement beam, this phase two. We know at the end of this one is the, is the limit state for the crack. Once the load is locked at this point, the crack is going to appear. But for the under reinforcement beam, once the crack appears, suddenly the, the steel reaches the yellow stress. That's mean just like this. Suddenly we are here and then going to phase 3. The phase 2 is, is compared to here. Maybe just a very, very, very short one. Very short distance. Mm -hmm. Because once the crack, crack appear, the steel does the year. So something that's like this. Mm -hmm. So the under reinforcement can also be said to be the phase 2. Mm -hmm. The under reinforcement. Yeah. That one also happened in the phase 2. And the reinforcement actually is mainly because the phase two was reduced or become very shorter. But the over reinforcement actually is phase three. Phase three actually there's no phase three for over reinforcement because the steel have not reached the other strengths. Of, uh, the ratio of the reinforcement ratio of 
the approach the first part appropriately uh, in first year yeah. is larger than uh, uh, minimum minimum enforcement and is less than maximum. Yeah. It's between yeah. that and that street. Yes. And you can say that the over enforcement the ratio is must be is large than max. Yes. And for the and the enforcement the ratio is so less more. than the yes. minimum. Yes. So for this angle reinforcement beam, when the actual reinforcement ratio is smaller than this room me, must be potentially crack, concrete crack, tensile strength which is yielding strength, and then still stress quickly into the strengthening phase, and the, through the yielding platform, and there's only a concentrated crack in beam. So only, only one crack, one line crack just has to fall down. So crack is wide and directed to the certain height along the beam. At the same time, the compression concrete has not, not been crashed. However, crack is very wide and the deformation is very small. Deflection is very small. Still, the first is, is even pulled off. As the beam feels suddenly, it's a brittle fear. Beam that behavior this way is called under the beam. Let's let's show the carrier capacity of under the first beam depending on the tensile strength of concrete. And the gradient unit is not allowed to be used. So you see, for the under reinforcement beam, it's depend on Tensile strength of the concrete. For the over reinforcement, is depending on compress stress of the concrete. Both of these have no, have no relation with the strength of the steel. This angle reinforcement is related to the tensile strength of concrete. Over reinforcement is related to the compressed strength of concrete. So in summary, the failure characteristic of normal cross section of the flex member vary with the reinforcement ratio. The feature is when reinforcement ratio is too small. The concrete failure strength depends on the concrete tensile strength. And the cross section side, the failure appears greater. And B, for excessive reinforcement, the reinforcement cannot be fully used. The component failure strength depends on the size of the compression strength of the concrete and the cross section the size. And the failure also appears greater. Reasonable amount of the Reinforcement bars will be in a range of two limit. And so failure of the over reinforcement and the under reinforcement can be avoided. So that means larger than the row me, smaller than row max, as you said. Yes. So that's this three uh, the, oh, actually it's two different failure moves. One is the brittle, one is the plastic for different reinforcement ratio. Okay. So the first part, the first part of this chapter three, basic calculation principle, the loading capacity of the normal section of the flexor member, it is in, including four part content, basic assumption and the equivalent rectangular stress block for concrete in compression zone. <coughs> what does this mean? We see in the compression zone the stress is in curve. But in curve, you need you you very very difficult to calculate the the total force. You need to use the mathematical method to use it. How to say this this thing? Integration. Uh, integration. Integration. Integrate. Oh, integrate. Yes, integrate. Yes. Integrate. 
in Hebrew. Yes, it's in Hebrew. So it's difficult. Yeah. So we want to make a very relatively easy method to use what you the equivalent, use the equivalent method, rectangular equivalent. Keep this uh, result force unchanged and the anchoring point unchanged. Keep this the, the value of the force and the action of point of the force unchanged. Then we use this rectangular shape to replace this curve. So that's mean the second part, equivalent rectangular stress block. And the third part is uh, the relative bound heat of the compression zone and the, the minimum reinforcement ratio. So we see the first uh, assumption, plane section assumption, actually we have used before, plane section assumption. And the all level of load. The average stream of the cross section keeps the straight line distribution. So in this in this direction, the, the stream you know, just like this. The chain is like a is a, a straight line. That's it. Straight line what's the mean straight line? That means the the point to the to the, the distance of the point to the new drives, if the distance is larger. The strain is larger. The relation is just uh, uh, proportional. It's not a curve. If it's something like this curve, it's not a proportional. Yeah. So it's a, it's a strain relation with the distance. So it's a keep a straight line distribution, and the strain or any point. Our uh, cross section is proportional to the distance between the point and the neutral x. So that's the main, the, the most important uh, idea of this plane section. section assumption. And this assumption is uh, approximate, but the error resulting from this assumption is small, so it's, it, it's enough for real protection. Okay. Uh, okay. Something is approximate, but the error resulting from the assumption is small, so it's fully meet the requirement for engineering calculation. So plane section assumption provides provide the geometrical deformation of the flexor capacity of the reinforcement complex beam and uh, can enhance the log logical and the rational calculation method. This result in that formula O covers a more clear physical meaning. So which this calculation and the formula is very easy to understand and easy to calculation. And the second assumption is no consideration of complete tensile strength. So, as the correct as the correct section, most tensile complete have not worked. But actually, in real situation, still have a small part of the complete can resist some tensile force. But in this assumption. Consider the tensile, tensile stress is smaller, is small, and the arm of the internal force are also small. So, hence the internal moment is, is small too. There is a contribution calculation. This is contribution to the calculation can be neglected, and thus simplify the calculation procedure. This means that we didn't consider the tensile force resisted by the concrete once the beam crack. That means for this beam, once the crack appear, actually because still some part of this concrete can resist some tensile force. 
Plus this is of course resistance by the concrete. Actually, the value is small, and also the arm, the arm of the force to the duplex is very shorter. Then the movement generated in this part of force is greatly smaller. So we just uh, negate the negative yeah. because actually you may want to calculate this force, it's hard. So it's not significant. Yeah, so we just uh, to consider it. Yeah, just really it. And uh, the third part, this assumption is the sigma and the epsilon curve. Because we know for the real situation, the sigma and epsilon curve of the of the steel is like this, for the company is something like this. But for those for those curve, it's very hard to use for the calculation. Then for simplify, for the concrete, the stress strain curve of the concrete have a difficult difficult uh, uh, schema. And the uh, curve consider with the parabolic curve and the horizontal line is widely used. Like this. And this first part is used the parabolic, and then the end is used the horizontal line. So if they did consider this, this decrease part, just use the horizontal line. So make it simple. So use this formula. When the epsilon is smaller than epsilon zero, normally this e to 0 equal to 0 0.002 e to 0 so the SND SND section OA is a parabola, this part, and the second part AB is a horizontal. So where this sigma zero is the peak stress and is taken as 0 0.585 FCK. FCK is the standard cylinder compressive stress of concrete. And 0 0.85 is the reduction factor. Meanwhile, Equal to zero equal to zero point zero zero two is the strain of the concrete compressing to the peak stress. This point is stress. This sigma zero and this epsilon zero. The strain, the strain, the strain of the B point here is the epsilon. Say at least the ultimate. But that just means that. Once is a strain less than that, the structure already destroyed. Yeah. Uh, this value is equal to 0 0.0035. Normally we use this value. And uh, into the CU is the concrete strain corresponding to the peak stress. So for the steel reinforcement, Sigma epsilon relation curve. This model used to simplify the ideal elast uh, elast elastic plastic stress strain relation. This figure. So it's more simple. Find the oblique strain, the straight line, and then horizontal straight line. Uh, the OA section is the elastic piece. And the reinforced stress of the A point corresponding to the yearly strain of sigma y, and the corresponding strain is the yearly stress sigma epsilon y, and the slope OA line is the elastic modulus. A B section is the plastic stage, and the B point corresponding to the strain of the start strain for the strengthening segment sigma epsilon k. 
from this finger, the stress free relation you use this formula. So very, it's very simple. Just like this. So this slope is the modulus E. And then the third part oh,
passing the single constant of the value single zero, single, single zero. once the epsilon larger than epsilon zero, sigma equal to sigma zero, this value. Then if we if we can want to calculate the force the C, we need to do this integral integrate just like this. From zero to this consistency is zero. Consistency is zero. Which consistency is zero? Consistency is zero is the height of the compressive zone. But this compressive zone, the height, the height of the compressive zone, can divide into two parts. One part is this curve. One part is this constant, constant value. So for this, for this. Integrate. We divide this into two parts, from zero to y zero, and from y zero to c c h zero. Y zero is this at this curve, the top point of the curve. Up up this point is a constant constant value. So this is. When we want to calculate the force C, the total force, total compressive force, use this integrate integral, and uh, this range, this range will divide into two parts, zero to y zero and uh, y zero to the top. So at uh, this part, the stress distribution is is a curve. So we use this this formula. And in this part, the compressor stress is a constant, so we use this value. So once you use this formula, you can go to this force, force C. So it looks very complicated, a little bit difficult to get this value. So do you know how to calculate this? To do, do this in degree? D this means distance, right? Like which one? D D D. Where D? Distance. A D? Yeah. No, no, this this is the the. I think this is the formula. No, no, no. How to say? Sigma 
Epsilon you know, means the, the stress value. On this part, on, at, at this area, the force equal to B, B, B multiplied B Y is the area. Area is part. You know the area, you know the stress. Sigma, sigma is no, then multiply this, multiply this. Then this part is the force in this small part of area. And uh, for other part, something like this, that's the main this integrate. Okay. Something like this, it's like the sigma. You divide it into many small parts, and that's the sigma together. And the integrate equal to sigma. Mm -hmm. I think this is, it should be learned at the, the first year. Okay. So, actually, it's many methods of technique to do this in green. Yeah. It is a little bit complicated. Yeah. So finally you can go to C you if you do this in red, finally you can go to C equal to this. This is the result. So if you want, if you want, if you ask why, why is this? Then you should do this in great. <laughs> then you can find out the result is that. Okay. So the when C is the distance from the location of the force C to the edge of the compression zone, and the can be calculated this. Where C? Where C is this point? Edge point. This part. From the, is the distance from the location of the force to the edge of the compression to this part where C so where C equal to this sigma uh, C is zero because C is zero equal to is this the total height of the compression to and the way C is this part. So this part, this value is the point acting point of the force to the new rights. You see, this integral, this integral, what's the difference with the former one? You see this one? From zero to cosine c is zero and uh, sigma b d y. And here you see also from zero to sigma but here b, b, y, b, y. another way. Because you this formula to this formula the result is c. This formula the result is the inverse of C, this time C. It's the it's a C plus Y, well, not Y C, it's a plus, yeah, this, this distance we see, this distance. It's a, it's a, actually, like a area, area movement. Because, because another way. Is uh, just movement because if there's no way, the result is actually is a force. Force multiplied by actually the is the arm. It's the movement. The result is the movement. So this is the the the, the up part of this is the movement of this real distribution force to the new rise. And uh, divided by the re result of the force, then we can go to the action point of this force. Mm -hmm. That means the, the movement, actually, the, the, the movement is used by the compressive force. 
to the new racks, keep it, keep it unchanged. Because they will combine the action point. So, any question for this one? For this one, the, the key point is to find the action point of this force C, compression force C. This is the distribution force, but the result force or the, how say, the uh, total, total So for this formula, we, the most, the result, the purpose is to get this action point or the compression force. So this way say equal to equal to, this does the change this this move this because you see it is zero outside from this from this formula thing and do this is where finally you find that this result is like this it looks so complicated so obviously using this use this complete compressive spray stress strain curve to compute the force C at the location of C is not easy. It's so complicated. But actually you see in this formula actually it's is a simple. Only this sigma uh, equal zero equal C U. And also, because you see, only this three way, three symbol is a last thing you need to know. And now that is the test value. Mm -hmm. And I said H0. H0, I mean H0. Yeah. Normally, we know the higher than the second H. And the H0, H0 normal equal to H minus AS. And the AS, what I said last time, normally it's uh, the center of the reinforcement to the yeah, yeah, yeah. S. The center of all is many, many layers. It's the central of this to the edge. Normally, AS, we don't know. At the beginning, we normally we just uh, make something, suppose AS equal to 50 or 25 or something like this. If it now if it's just one layer, something like this, if two layer maybe just uh, six sixteen, something. 
So a, sim a simplified method that they use the equivalent of rectangular stress book, stress block for concrete in instead of the actual diagram is uh, used. So how to do how to do this equivalent rectangular block? So use use this equivalent rectangular stress block concrete instead of this real actual stress diagram must satisfy these two following condition is this keep the position of the force and chain and keep the side force and chain the value and the position cannot be changed this is the basic things then so how to do these things the here introduce the two dimensionless parameters bed and the gun bed equal to x divided by x c gun divided by the sigma divided by sigma zero so we now we, we introduce the two new symbol then from a figure 319 is this, this figure We can see the force C equal to gamma sigma zero. Gamma sigma zero then equal to gamma sigma zero equal to the, the real sigma. And uh, B is less X is the the height we need to calculation. The height of this equivalent rectangular equivalent rectangular stress block. And then if we use XC, because here we see here bet equal to X divided by XC, then the replace this is me like this. And then the action point of the force C, where C, because where C, if you use the equivalent rectangular block, of course the action point should be in the middle, in the middle of the block. So it should be x divided by 2, half of the x. In the middle, because you use this equivalent rectangular shape, then the action point, of course, in the middle. In the middle. So, Equal to x divided by two. Equal to bad x c divided by two. Because over here we suppose this x equal to bad divided by two. Then we just replace this things into this. We can go to bad. Finally, we can go to bad equal to those things. Okay. And now uh, equal to this. So when the money, money equal zero and equal zero, the equivalent rectangular stress block or the compression to replace the actual stress block in this figure C. So because in this formula C, the only thing we don't know is the sigma zero and the sigma C U. If we know this two value, then we can go to we know the beta. Once we know beta, then gamma we also know. So that means if you know this two value in this formula, for this real distribution, we can use this rectangular block to replace it. So normally, if we take it equal to zero equal to this zero to the power two. Compare the ultimate compression strain equal to this 0 0.0035. Then from this equation, we have we can get got beta equal to 0 0.8095. The height equivalent stress block x equal to this, and the equivalent stress value we got this. You see the. Key point is x to zero and x to cu. Once we define, determine this two value, 
So if you want to block, you just uh, know the x and the value. So for the ultimate compressive stress CU, uh, sigma CU, the corresponding coefficient beta of the edge of the compressive concrete of flex member in this code specify, specify this value based on the concrete strength. Listening table, the the equivalent the rectangular stress book for the compressive com computer combining with the experiment date at the home and the broad. This code takes the equivalent rectangular stress value gamma sigma zero as a, as F C D and the which F D is the actual compressive stress. So you got this in this in the in the code because this table because we we see. This this bet and the gamma all based on this epsilon zero epsilon c u. As you know, if epsilon c epsilon zero epsilon c u only related to the grade of the concrete. Different grade of the concrete will have different value of this epsilon zero and epsilon c u. Then in this block, in this code. C15 and below, they use the, this value. And C55, 60, 65, so gradually getting smaller. And uh, once we got this value, then you can go this value. So here, they use this 0 0.8. Actually, just now we got 0 0.8095. They so just uh, neglect the those part use this 0 0.8. So this value you can find in the code. Once you determine what concrete you use, will be C50 or C60, then you can directly go to the value of the beta. Once you know beta, what do you know? That means you know the Distribution of the equivalent rectangular blocks. Once you know beta, then you know the x, because x equal to beta x c. And uh, once you know beta, then you got this gamma. Once you know gamma, then you know the x is the stress, equivalent stress. So that's the, that's the why the the value or the value better in, the, in this table. How we got this value? So we we because we when you check the code, it does tell you where how this this value come from. But now we just tell you how we got this different way the have different value better. That's just use this equivalent uh, rectangular stress block and use this formula, then you can go this bad way. Roshi, when we design, when we start to design, we will just add the formula and we will not need to calculate the value. In the code, we will find the value. Which way do you say? For example, the value of beta. Yeah. We just see if, for example, I have, I, I have to calculate, I have to calculate, uh, I have to calculate something, I have to calculate the strength of a pin or something like that, and I'm finding my, my, that I need to calculate the C, for example. Yeah. So the beta, I know the formula, or well, not the formula, I know the kind of material I will use. So how to know those values? I will find it in the code, or I will find it. Yeah, I find it in the code. So I will not need to calculate them, but I, the, the value I'm always there. Yeah. I will just need to apply. Yeah. Okay. So this is the only things we do. Yeah, let's, let's tell you how does this value come from. Okay. Okay. But you can go this value directly from the code. So different grade of the company have different value of the bed. 
and uh, for this from this from this figure, you see different different value means different uh, different of the uh, failure moon actually for this uh, for this slope line AC is a uh, appropriate appropriately defined a uh, redefined reinforcement actually this is this wrong and for this in the middle A B is the limit situation limit boundary for or for the reinforcement and uh, once for this A B line means over reinforcement situation You see, for A B situation, C B it is zero. This is the compression zoo, the height of the compression zoo. Once the compression zoo is larger than this value, that means it's over reinforcement. Mm. Once the com the compression zoo the height of the compression zoo is smaller than this value is a appropriately reinforcement actually it's, it cannot be too small if too small that means either reinforcement is here but in this figure I will tell you the boundary for the over and the appropriately reinforcement just this C, uh, CB this, this, this point For the enemy of the first one, B. Uh, what's, what's your question? Here. Follow here, we just reduce this. So, this boundary failure is that the tensor, so for this, for this AB, AB line, because uh, CB it is zero. If 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 the compression to the height is like this, that's, that's the boundary failure. At this at this point, the tensile reinforcement reaches the yield strain sigma y. See here, or uh, y this, this from the B point to this point, the length equal to. Y. This y is the yield stream of the reinforcement. And the beginning to yield, and meanwhile, the compressing concrete zone also reaches the ultimate compressing stress y to the CO. See, at this point, the A point, the y to the CO of the concrete. Even the CO is the strain of the concrete. And this Y is the strain of the reinforcement. So, SLMC will be the same as the concrete. Yeah, because of the, this up part is in compression to the lower part is in tension to So at this situation, the height of the compression to XB equal to CB H0. So this this height. So at this AB, this line, at this situation, the compression reaches the ultimate strain and the steel reaches the yield strain. So at happening at the same time. That means if this condition is the boundary condition, this happened at the same time. Not the not the, the steel reaches the yield stress and the the, the concrete have not yet reached the the compression stress. At this at, at this situation at this point, 
the Congress reached the comparative strength, the, the reinforcement reached the yield strength, happened at the same time. So that's the, the boundary. Once, once the, the reinforcement is smaller than this, or become like this, AC, AC line, the strain, the strain of the snail actually is uh, development large, uh, is, uh, is larger than e epsilon y. It is so yes. Is this? Yes. It's, it's, no, it's uh, y is greater than it's, uh, it's. Or you talk about the is for the is hmm? for the is yeah for the AC for AC it's a appropriately reinforcement so actually epsilon y is epsilon is is that we can say we can say that epsilon y can be like the maximum version for the reinforcement. In the appropriate enforcement, B, damage, yeah. the, 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 the fellow is plastic, right? Yeah. So it's the same way when we talk about the ratio. We say that the ratio yeah. must be uh, must be less okay. equal. For A, B, A, B line, is the ratio is the maximum, mm. rule maximum. Oh, okay. That's the boundary of the ratio. You want the ratio. Okay. So for appropriate for is the less you must be? Yeah. Yes. So the failure of the under reinforcement complex flex member begins the year of tensile strength and after the period of deformation strength, strength up, the, the member field at this one at this one is wrong. Actually it's uh, not under reinforcement, actually it's a uh, appropriate reinforcement. This one this one is wrong. And the member field at the same time the tensor the tensile strain of the tensile reinforcement uh, satisfy this value and uh, so strain distribution of the shift appropriate uh, ratio actually uh, I don't know or uh, this is a figure I cannot <laughs> some, some, some people just uh, took this picture but yeah okay so the spin distribution of the appropriate appropriately reinforcement beam is the AC line in figure at this time at this time the height of the two is a smaller axis is a smaller than C. Mm -hmm. This compression height is smaller than this height. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the failure of the over reinforcement Complete flex member begin that the complete strain reach ultimate strain the member field because for the over reinforcement it's depending on the compressive stress of the concrete. At this time, the tensile strain of the, the reinforcement is less than yield strain, and so strain distribution of the over reinforcement beam is the AD line. Is the AD line. The, the strain of the steel is smaller than y. Yeah, because it's too, too, too much steel inside and everything reaches the other strains.
So it's the same from figure 30, 20, uh, 20. Boundary damage is the boundary of the oral reinforcement and the, the proper reinforcement complete. With the actual cross section height of the compression zoo, XC larger than this value, it is, it is the oral reinforcement beam. Is this? If the XC larger than this, CB is zero. That means it's a over reinforcement. When XC is smaller than this, it's a appropriate reinforcement. He is also wrong. Therefore, this CB equal to XB divided by H0 is used as a boundary condition. CB is used as a boundary condition. Where XB is the height of the compression zone, when boundary failure occurs, depending from the plane section assumption. So we can use XC compared with or use the CB. The C compared with the CB. See, if C is smaller than C B, that means it's a, a probably reinforcement. If C is larger than C B, it's become an over reinforcement. See this? X equal to C and multiply H0. CB is the boundary area. Once C larger than C B, it's become over reinforcement. Once C smaller than C B, it's a normally it's a appropriately reinforcement. Of course, we have another minimum. It should be larger than the minimum reinforcement ratio. Yeah, just the basic range from this point to some point of this. So call this KCP uh, as the boundary condition. So for, the, for the limit height of the comparison to uh, the equivalent rectangular stress distribution, because we know this, the comparison KCP should be x divided by h0 and use this value. And by the geometry relation, Okay, have a break. Suppose 
written but it is zero. X is zero x may equal to this x b plus suppose we see this this part is x c something like this. Yeah. So x zero equal to x b plus x c uh, very clear x b plus x c this one to one and uh, this one so uh, finally is a x c divided by x b equal to epsilon y by epsilon c u so x c is this distance and x b is this distance epsilon y is this distance epsilon u is this distance because this two angle two is a uh, similar what's the relationship yeah, so, x divided by x b equal to x y divided by x u. So, one way we can go this, we call this that x b divided by x zero. Actually, we can use x no c u divided by x no c u plus x no y because in this. The purpose of this, our purpose is to get KCB. But KCB equal to XB divided by zero. So we need to find the value for XB divided by X zero. Then we can, because XB, XB actually is difficult. To, so we can use this epsilon C or epsilon Y to get XB. XP divided by zero. Then we can replace XP divided by zero by this. Then finally we can get XP. So this got a little, a little b. Yeah. But if you just uh, decompose this. Because SD is the standard uh, tensor 
stress on the reinforcement and the yeast the modulus then we can replace x way by this then finally CB we can use this formula this is the base of the determine the height of the computer doing actually CB you also can find directly in the code. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Why 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 did you see? So this is just tell you how yes. So either either table of either code, you got the table of different uh, code, different grade of the template, different grade of the reinforcement, you got the different value of the C B.
same experience from the it's not a theory from a theoretical yeah, it's based on experiment and experience. So this is the four part of the chapter three of the this time. This the fourth the fifth part secretly reinforcement rectangular section left member. This part is mainly tell us how to calculation, how to design the rectangular shape, rectangular section beam. Fix formula and the calculation condition and the calculation method. So fix formula, you see, this is a rectangular section beam and we now we directly use the equivalent rectangular stress block. According to the basic principle for the flexible capacity schematic of the calculation of the single reinforcement rectangular section of the flexible member, you see this, you see for this section, you when you make the balance of the force, because in, in this section you see because of the tensile force, because of the compressive force, and also the other moment. So if you keep this component balanced, the tensile force and the compressive force should be in balance in uh, opposite direction and the value should be the same. And the moment, suppose to the neutral X or to this edge of where the moment should be the same. Because you got the tensile force, you got the current force the, uh, to the same x or to same point, all the force generated, the moment generated by different force should be uh, in uh, opposite direction and the value should be the same. The result should be zero. The moment should be zero. Keep the component balance. So, basic principle is that most of the, the most of the worst effect of the basic combination or load on calculated section of the member should not exceed the loading capacity. So this is the design. And the form of the figure, the basic calculation formula for the single force of the flexor member with a rectangular cross section can be derived. Use the equilibrium condition of the internal force being zero, T is tensile force, C is the compressive force, should be FCD, BX. FCD, BX. B is the width of the section, X is the height of the equivalent rectangular stress block. So FCD is the compressing stress of the concrete. So FCD BX is the compressive force. And the T FS E AS. AS is the area of the reinforcement. And the FSD is the tensile strength of the reinforcement. Then we go to the balance. Compressive force and tensile force, the value should be the same, but just the directory is the in the opposite direction, they keep the balance. And then, for the moment, from the equilibrium condition of the sum of the moment resulting from the point of the tension reinforcement T on the second zero, the balance equation should be like this. FCB, BX, the compressive force. H0 is the effective height of the section minus half of X. So that means this is the compressive force. The, from the compressive force, compressive, compressive force to the tens, to the reinforcement, the distance, this distance equal to H0 minus half X. 
that's the, the R of the compression force to the reverse weight. Okay? Because at this end, the, the movement is induced by the load, the out, outside load, the external load is a gamma zero MD. And uh, in this section, the resistance movement of the internal force should be large than this value. It should be like that. Uh, yeah. Because you resist the force, should it be larger than the load force. So, from the equilibrium condition of the summary moment resulting from the point of the compressing com complete force C of the section P0, the balance equation can also be written like this. The external force keeps the unchanged gamma 0 MD. And the moment FSDAS, the tensile force, and the action point H0 minus half X is to tensile force, the action point is here, so general moment is like this. So this moment can vary. So now we got this is three formula. Why is the balance of the force? Another two is the balance for the moment. So here you see is that large or equal, at least equal. Like uh, less of the force. Yeah. You should at least equal, but it's best larger than the load. The resist the force. So capacity of the computer section, MU, the resistor, yeah, the resistor cap capacity actually. FCD is the design value of concrete compression strength. FSD is the design value of the non tensile tensor strength of steel reinforcement. ES is the cross section area of the steel. X is the calculation height of the compression tube according to the equivalent rectangular stress. B is the wide of the cross section and H0 is the effective height of the section. H0 equal to H minus AS. AS is the central of the steel bar for the surface of the B. So this is the three dollars three formula, basic formula for calculation. The equation, these three equations are only suitable for actually it's not and it's an appropriate design, different design enforcement, quality enforcement is the wrong. And maybe and the reinforcement, sometimes maybe have the have the meaning of appropriately reinforcement. That's why 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 they use this 
many times for this reason. Maybe it's a mistake. It's not applied to the over enforcement beam. And the uh, shape is it's, it's mistake. <laughs> Of course, this two words it have different meaning. Yes. So some some people make this thing. In the book, in the book. Ah, uh, yeah. The, 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 the this is from the early version. Now the new version have correct. Mm -hmm. So last the book does the same issue. This is different. Yeah, this is this, yeah, this book is correct. Okay. Because I know uh, I haven't got the electronic version, so the PPT just use the old version. So because when the over reinforcement reinforcement beam fail, the actual tensile stress doesn't reach the design value of the tensile strength. So the FCD cannot be used. Therefore the formula applied condition is in order to avoid the over reinforced beam. The height of the compression zone should be satisfied this because KCB ply H0 equal to XB is the boundary condition for the remember? Yes. XB KCB is zero. So X should be smaller than this boundary condition. Because of this three formula is not suitable for over reinforcement. Once the x larger than xb is belong to over reinforcement, this formula cannot be used. Because over reinforcement beam, the steel have not reached is a yield strength, tensile strength, so cannot use F S D. So what? Where the CB is a relatively limited height for the compression zone and can be referred according to the comfort strength and type of the steel product in the table in the code. From the equation, the calculated dips for the compression zone, X can be represented as. So this is simple, just use this, this formula X equal to remove FCDB to this side, X equal to FSDS divided by FCDB. So, so that means when you know the area, area of the steel and the material, then you can calculate it and go to the equivalent height of the stress block. So the relatively height of the compression zoo. Actually, X and the C, C is a, the same thing. Actually, Y is C B is a dimension, no dimension. X is just the real height, yeah. something like this. Yeah. You see, C C equal to X divided by H zero. We replace X by this F S D F C B. And AS BH0. Clear? AS is the area of the reinforcement. BH0 is the area of the beam. Then AS divided by H BH0 equal to rho to the reinforcement ratio. Then you see, KC equal to the ratio rho. And multiply SSD divided by FCD. So that means this this C is actually is reflect a lot of things. Not only the reinforcement ratio, but also the relation of the uh, material strength. This is the strength of the reinforcement. This strength of the concrete. Yeah. So from this figure we can see, can see it's not only reflect the reinforcement ratio, but also reflect the stress ratio of material. And so can see it's also called the reinforcement characteristic. 
fail. And a more general meaning than this before some initial. When C equal to C B, the maximum reinforcement ratio rho max for the appropriate reinforcement beam is so that means from this we can calculate the reform reinforcement ratio because C B you can find from the code F C B F S D actually also find can find the because of the strength of material, yeah. then you can find the reinforcement ratio, the boundary condition of the reinforcement ratio. So that's the, then you know how much steel actually put inside. I can, cannot be more than this. So before you design, you can use this where you to check if you to control the, the, the amount of the reinforcement, how much. You cannot do more than this. Clearly, reinforcement ratio of uh, this actually is uh, a proper reinforcement should be smaller than this value. And then you want you want to avoid uh, under reinforcement or lower reinforcement, the reinforcement ratio should also larger than the minimum value. Smaller than max, larger than mean. Mean is uh, this way here. Yeah. This way.